Hey there, I'm Steve and you're watching Car Simplified. In this video, we're talking about bulb grease again. Was I wrong in my previous video about this topic? I'm going to discuss that a little. Bulb grease is one of those products where it's just another product packaged with a different label. It helps ease customers' minds so that they know, yes, this is indeed for this purpose. Plus, in like this example, it has the added benefit of someone going, hmm, I have dielectric grease at home, but I don't have bulb grease. I think I'll buy this. Before that tangent derails the video, let's just get into how this product is used. In the previous video, I talked about using this on plastic and rubber seals, but not the metal contacts or the glass. And I definitely stand behind, don't put it on the glass. You wanna get that off if you get a little bit of it on there. Um, same with your finger grease, like hand grease and any kind of like, any kind of grease. You wanna get that off of the bulb because it creates a hot spot and that hot spot can cause the glass to fracture or overheat and then you lose the bulb prematurely. Before filming this video, I was looking through the comments of the previous video to see if there was any kind of comments I could address. I couldn't find one that stuck with me, but I remember someone being super adamant that this stuff was conductive. It definitely is not conductive. You don't have to take my word for it, just look up the definition of dielectric and see what the results say. However, there was one comment that made this point and a lot of comments that were trying to make this point. When you take the bulb and connect it into the socket, the grease that's on the contacts gets pushed away by the socket's contacts and you still get metal to metal contact and that works. I agree with that 100% if you've got a new bulb and a new socket that is going to be strong enough to push all that grease out of the way. And most OEM sockets are going to be that strong. I have seen some plugs where the metal to metal contact that happens inside of them is pretty much just sheer luck. And I'm not gonna press that luck by putting an insulator between them. And the reason why I said new in that statement is because they can wear with age and get corroded. You're supposed to be preventing corrosion with this anyway, but most new parts I've seen don't come with this installed. And let's pause for a little tangent on that. What does that say about OEMs? They've looked into this, I'm sure, and have found that either they don't care how long the bulb lasts because it lasts long enough that they won't have to warranty it within the warranty window of the car, or they've determined that they don't get any kind of return on investment by using this. So they would get it in bulk quantities and bulk prices. You're paying retail for this, so is it worth it? I don't know. But let's get back into what this stuff is supposed to do. This is supposed to prevent corrosion. Now on a bulb, what corrodes? Well, half the bulb or bulb unit is going to be in the housing, which should be sealed because if it's not sealed, you're gonna run into issues with the glass part of the bulb really quickly. Moisture gets in there and that's gonna kill the bulb real quick. At that point, it's not gonna matter how much of this goo you smeared on the electrical connector, that bulb is just not gonna last that long in that environment. If you're replacing a certain bulb on the car way more frequently than you think you should have to, maybe this will fix it, but it's much more likely that there's a broken seal somewhere in the housing that's letting moisture in and it's not happy with that. And I know with a lot of DIY diagnostics, people like to throw the least expensive thing at it first and then go from there. And I know this is way less expensive than a taillight housing or a headlight housing, but I wouldn't even start with this. I would inspect the housing first and see if there's any issues there. Now related to that, there's also a detail that I mentioned in my previous video that becomes relevant here. There's some headlight housing designs where there's a cap in the back and you put the light inside the housing and seal it with the cap. With that design, the cap seal is going to be your main line of defense against dirt, salt, water, all that stuff that's gonna to try to corrode your electronics. With that design, you also sometimes end up with headlight bulbs that aren't the common 9000 series bulbs, like 9006, 9007. The bulbs that are glass on one end, and there's a little bit of metal, and then most of the bottom end is plastic. You plug the plastic plug into the plastic base. There are bulbs like the H1 bulb where besides the glass, most of it is made out of metal. I don't know of anyone that puts this stuff on the contacts of those mostly metal bulbs. Despite all the comments that I've read from the previous video and all the other videos that I've seen on the subject since then, I still do not use this stuff on the contacts of any light bulb. I do still use it on the rubber and the plastic though, and that reminds me of a comment that I got on there asking, does this contain any petroleum distillates? That was a smart question to ask because a lot of petroleum products will eat away at plastic and rubber, and luckily this stuff does not have it. 
at least this particular product. I would check. This does say, caution, contains polydimethyl silazane and silicon dioxide. If it had petroleum distillates in it, it would have upped it from a caution to a warning because it's hazardous to health and it would be labeled on there, of course. That's usually found in a petroleum product, though, and all the dielectric grease I've seen is silicone-based. I definitely like to see those kinds of questions in my comment section, though, so keep them coming. You may recognize this car as the GTO that was in that video and other videos around that time. I used the bulb grease the way that I recommend to use the bulb grease on this car, so let's check it out. So this headlight housing cap gasket still has some of that grease on it. I could have sworn I put a little more grease than that on there, but there is still some there. The bulb is still good, the gasket's still clean, and most importantly, the contacts are not corroded. So, can you put bulb grease directly on the contacts? Yes, you can, and you won't run into any problems as long as things are ideal. And even if things are less than ideal, you can still get away with doing that sometimes. I'm going to continue to not do that and recommend my technique in this video and other videos because I feel that the amount of air that gets in that chamber is very minimal and it's not going to cause the kind of corrosion that will affect the bulb in a time span that the bulb is going to last in any way. If you're using the bulb grease to assist the gasket that seals off inside of here, there's very little air in there that can cause any kind of rust or corrosion. Because of the design of this car, there's actually no gasket that goes inside here, so there's an even bigger air chamber that we're dealing with, and after the three years of this bulb being in here, it still looks brand new. At the end of the day, if you want to put dielectric grease on your contacts, that's okay. You can't let one video decide how you live your life, and you can look up a ton of information, not just other videos, but the internet's full of information. Some of it's gonna say that I'm wrong, some of it's gonna say that I'm right, but the important thing is that you do your own research, come to a conclusion, and stick with it stubbornly for the rest of your life, just like I'm doing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video.